Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I am going to be talking about um, Solnar Swift Dark. It is a new tabletop role-playing game that I am writing. So, uh, so, uh, so I am creating my own tabletop role-playing game, uh, which is not that uncommon of an occurrence. There are a lot of role-playing games out, and there are a lot of role-playing games in development. So um, let me just talk a little bit about it, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about why I'm going down this road. So uh, the reason I'm creating uh, the so what it is is Solnar is the name of the world. So the name of it's a fantasy based world. Uh, so it has the traditional races in it, except dwarves are not in it. Uh, they were in it historically, uh, but something happened to their race, and I'll explain that a little more in detail in the future. But you have humans, elves. Dwarves, big, big asterisks on dwarves. Um, so it is a it's a fantasy based role playing game. Magic, uh, you know, spells, uh, traditional uh, traditional classes. Uh, so you would find, you know, fighter types, uh, rogue types, cleric types, and um, and wizard types in there. Um, and so it, it's it's pretty traditional uh, a fantasy based role playing game. I have some major changes, you know, to that world that make it fairly distinct, in my opinion. And I'll be giving more information about Solnar, the world, at a later time. And um, but the the one of the reasons why I'm super excited about this to make it is the rules engine, right? Which is Swift Arc. So Swift Arc is, uh, you know, essentially tell a story quickly. So Arc is a story arc. Swift is just a quick way, is a way to say fast. Um, so, uh, this is a fast story arc, okay? Um, so, and that is the main impetus for this tabletop role-playing game. So, uh, I have this, uh, so, you know, basically I have a lot, you know, if you guys have been listening to my, uh, my YouTube, uh, videos, I'm, I deeply care about tabletop role-playing games. I absolutely love them. And I think the biggest problem they have by far is they don't attract millennials. They don't attract young people. Right? And I think one of the reasons for that is the pace. The pace came out of the 80s, right? So in the 80s, you know, if you watch Stranger Things recently, that that show, which is, you know, a, just a culture-smashing show, man. It's just the best, right? If you haven't watched Stranger Things, check it out. It, it That show started with, you know, four teenagers in the 80s coming off of a 10-hour game, right? And... You know, that really did happen. I did that myself. I, I think we were limited in about six, eight hours, you know, but we, we would play in these huge, long, you know, game sessions, right? So the, the super long games and the very slow pace really comes from the 80s, right? And when a millennial or a young person sees these games and you're telling this story, right? So you're telling a story. That part is really exciting. You know, I think almost universally people love stories. They love to hear stories. They love to tell stories. They love to be involved in stories. They love to interact with stories. Stories are wonderful, right? So when you're telling a tabletop role-playing game story, you're telling a really cool story, and then it grinds to a halt, and you go into a combat that takes 15 minutes, 45 minutes, sometimes two hours, right? And a lot of people love those mechanics. I, I have, you know, I've enjoyed those mechanics in the old days, you know. But the reality is, one of the things that's recently happened is this rise of tabletop role-playing games, not as um, a playing instrument, but a watching instrument. So tons and tons of people getting a lot of enjoyment out of watching tabletop role-playing games as entertainment, right? So now that we're going there, and there are literally... You know, thousands of games on YouTube, thousands of games on Twitch. Um, you know, I think we're being limited in our audience because these games, these games are so slow. The storytelling is so slow, and it's ground to a halt by combat. Right. So, Solnar Swift Arc, uh, with Swift Arc, the rules engine Swift Arc, I want to dramatically, dramatically increase the rate of how tabletop role-playing games are told, right? And I want to do that in the session, 
and I want to do that at the cam- at, at at the campaign at the campaign level. So, Solnar Swift Arc will have sessions, gaming sessions that are exactly sixty minutes long and not one minute over. Right. So. Uh, basically, it is limited to a 60-minute play session. So when you get together with your friends, you guys, you know, go to some, go to the game master's house. You got now it does have some traditional um, tabletop role-playing game elements. One of them is game master, three to five players, set at a table, right? All that is traditional, just the way it was with Dungeons and Dragons, just the way it was with Cipher Rule System, just the way it was with Gamble World, and all the super pimp tabletop role playing games, the way they always were. Okay, um, but from there, um, the so it's a sixty minute session, right? And what happens is you arrive at your game master's house. Your game master's there, and she says, "Welcome. You know, here's the nachos. Have a seat." And for you know, for 15 minutes, you guys talk about seeing uh, you know the Magnificent Seven that weekend, you know, uh, or you know, Guardians of the Galaxy Two, and you kind of just you know, uh, you know, just kind of socialize, right? For 15 minutes, then you start playing the game. 60 minutes later, the game is over, and then you guys go. Jibbity, 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 you know, you talk a little bit, you know, somebody pets the cat, and it's done. 90 minutes out, and that is with the nonsense talk at the beginning and the nonsense talk at the end. And it's not nonsense, it's total social socializing. It's part of the experience, right? But in the length of a movie, you are in and out of that house, and you have had an exciting tabletop role-playing game. That is my goal, right? And the reason why is... Right now, what's happening? I have I have this problem. I uh, there's there's a buddy of mine, brilliant dude, great game master, runs a four hour game and goes over, goes over on a four hour game. A lot of people out there, I know you're like, well, so what? No, no biggie, right? Well, I have a really strong opinion about this, right? So one, I had to have a conversation with him, and I you know said it in you know the most the kindest way I could, but I'm like, dude. I don't do anything with anybody for four hours and then have to apologize that I have to leave. You know, like, this has got to stop. You know, I'm, I'm giving you four hours of my life. Can you please just honor that and keep your games to four hours? And I feel bad having to ask that, but it's ridiculous. We've got to get rid of this. And so I'm going to go somewhere really, really strange right now. Uh, but I'm going to talk about it. So... What's really strange is, I think, in tabletop role-playing games, and this is one of the things I'm trying to break with Solnar Swift Dark, is we have actually gotten to the point where we are um, essentially have almost a reverse prejudice, right? So in the old days, especially in the 80s, you know, um, a lot of people who played tabletop role-playing games, and I mean, and it might seem cruel for me saying this, but this is a known meme. This isn't just me saying it. But a lot of people felt that nerds and geeks played tabletop role-playing games. And I think in the 80s, that was absolutely true. You know, there were some cool kids, but, you know, I think this is absolutely, like, kind of documented within Freaks and Geeks. It's a fictional show, but, like, that show, which, again, is, a, like, a cultural icon, you know, ends with a cool kid playing Dungeons and Dragons with the nerds and the geeks. Literally, the show is called the Geeks, right? You know, Freaks and Geeks. So the issue here is we came from a history of this game happening and you could play for six, eight, ten hours because nobody had a boyfriend or a girlfriend. You know, like, you didn't have anywhere to go. You didn't have a date to go on. Like, and now this is 2016 and the people who are playing tabletop role-playing games, they are the nerds and the geeks. But what has changed is nerds and geeks in 2016 have boyfriends and girlfriends. Like, we have, we have been elevated in the social structure and it's and it's awesome it's wonderful right but we're still playing tabletop role playing games like only geeks and nerds from the 80s are playing them right and we are shutting out regular cool people right you know because they're like uh I'm not playing something for 10 hours you like you know I got a life you know and so you know it, it's it's almost become this weird reverse prejudice it's just super strange 
And so that's my point is, I want there to be an actual amount of playtime that makes sense to everyone. The, the, the nerds, the geeks, the cool people, everybody, right? And the reason why I say 90 minutes is that is the length of an American film. And the world loves American films. Everybody in the world loves American films, right? You know, it's just like, it. it's not like, if you say, hey, let's go, let's go see a movie. Nobody looks at like you got like two heads. But if you say, hey, let's play a four hour game, right? And I'll probably go over, maybe I'll go over about 15 minutes. Maybe I'll double the time we play and run an eight hour game, right? Like that is bonkers and that has to go away, right? So that is what Swift Arc, uh, Swift Arc is about. That rules engine is bring that game down to, you know, to one hour. In addition, and, and leaving a half an hour, right, of time just to be friends and just talk about cool stuff and, you know, and fun things and give each other a hug and, you know, be friends, right? You know, that's built in and that's awesome, you know? And a lot, at a lot of tabletop role-playing games, people are jetting out, you know, after the four-hour game because they're like, oh my gosh, I've been here for four hours, right? You know, and, you know, so I kind of want to give that time back, right? So... That is the goal of Swift Arc, is to make these games much faster. And along the same lines is the campaign length is also massively contracted, okay? It is a three, five, seven session campaign. So when you, so at the longest you're saying, hey buddy, you wanna play a campaign with me? And you know, so the game master will say, hey, Sarah, Pete, Joe, you know, um, Diana and Heather, we're, I want to run this campaign, right? And, and and they say, oh, okay, well, how long does it take? It takes an hour. Each game session is an hour, right? Well, how many game sessions are there? Three, five, or seven. And guess what? As players, it's your choice, right? So that at maximum, this is seven sessions, seven evenings or afternoons out of your life. And there's, there's an, a stop end stop on it, right? So get this, in the 80s, there was no end to a campaign. It just went until in, until supposedly everybody became an epic paladin or supposedly uh, you know, all the characters died. Or, But really what would often happen is, you know, somebody moved or, you know, or there are so many abandoned campaigns, it's sad. And so this is trying to get rid of abandoned campaigns. This is three, five, seven sessions. You're actually playing the campaign through. And in those three, five or seven sessions, What's going to happen is you're going to see the entire lifespan of that of that um, that player character, or you will see the epic death of that character, right? And that that's really different. And so that is what I'm saying. I'm putting time boundaries around it. It's it's time boxed, and it's reasonable. And I, I'm specifically reaching out to make this game attractive to millennials, attractive to young people. And, uh, and and I also, I do believe that traditional role players will play this, right? Um, but in some ways, if you're already a tabletop role-playing game fan, I f this, is, this is a Marvel model, right? Marvel doesn't do a ton to keep Marvel comic book fans. They make what are called, uh, you know, four, four quadrant movies. Movies that are attractive to to everyone, to old people, to young people, to middle-aged people, you know, families and singles and, you know, and all that. I'm trying to make a four-quadrant role-playing game. And, and to do that, I'm really trying to target millennials and get millennials interested and give them a game that it's reasonable to ask them to play, right? And, uh, and so that's the goal, right? Um, and so I have a lot of ideas around this and, uh, and I'm really excited uh, about this, and I'm also uh, writing articles on it. You can read about it at nerdarchy.com. And i um, really excited. I think it's going to be really cool and fun. I'm very excited because I'm, I'm, I'm actually writing my own tabletop role-playing game. Um, and, uh, and, you know, and, and it's exciting to me because I study role-playing games. I study the role-playing game industry. And so this is just a super fun exercise for me uh, that I definitely plan to have an output from. Uh, so, you know, cross your fingers, or if you're a Christian, please pray for me, you know, that I, that I can, I can have, um, endurance, that I can, you know, bring my intellectual, uh, prowess to bear on this, and that I can do a good job with it, 
I think this, you know, where I'm trying to land is where Mike Merles landed with Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition, where Monty Cook landed with um, uh, with Cipher Rules System. So those are high bars, right? You know, shoot from the moon, and uh, those guys really um, inspire me, and uh, and I really want to, um, you know, just I really want to do what I can to make this a, a great game. So one, uh, please let me know your thoughts, you know, uh, with, with this type of game, what should I put in there? What should I leave out? I uh, definitely, um, would really in, uh, in, enjoy your input and any advice you have on this. And as always, thank you very much for listening and have a wonderful day.